Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail of longing for them all the day long. Here come this part I want to get to. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And there shall be no might in thine hand. The so-called white man that says he's Jewish. He has the economic might and the military might to recover all the remnants of his people. Is he not chasing down right. the war, um, the war, the, what's the term? The war criminals. They're, they're not, they're hunting down every Nazi. Every bar of gold that was stolen, they're getting it back. But guess what? That's all. all that stuff that, that the Nazis took from them, they got from our people. And the Bible prophesies about the real Israelites, there shall be no might in thine hand. We don't have the economic might to recover our 12 tribes together. We don't have the military might to recover our 12 tribes of Israel. I heard dumb Gary Coleman before he died. When an earthquake hit Haiti, he said, why are we sending people over there? Yep. They're not our people. Yep. I said, this dude is stupid as hell. And I'm see why the most I put him to death. You got people speak against the, the people in Brazil. They and our, those are our people in Brazil. They said the major, the majority of slaves brought to Brazil. And you got Negroes on this side of the world, them they, 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 they not our people. Our people just dumb as hell. We there shall be no might in thine hand. <coughs> so the might only comes through this Bible. This is our only might, brothers. This is our only might. And Lord's will. Lord's, uh, Bezalel, do you have the new, the billboard? The Lord had Sister Bugsy design it, but Bezalel altered it a little bit. This is it. Y'all see that? Let's get the most high hand. every city where Israel is, believe me, it's going to cause a stir. It will cause a stir, and that's what we want. We want the, the ministers and the leaders of society to confront this truth, and only the Israelites have the answer. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say, Al Sir? That's beautiful. I love to see what I'm seeing there, because we got to get this thing going. We got to get it going, so that's beautiful. For the brothers and the sisters that's got their hands in this truth to make this thing happen, all praises to you. Yeah. Beautiful. All praises to the Most High for putting the spirit on you to get this job done. That's a beautiful right. thing to see. This is what we need. We need brothers and sisters that got that zeal. Let's keep this truth going. The rest of y'all that don't want to God going to move y'all out the way. That's why I don't get too attached to none of y'all. That way my feelings don't get hurt when y'all gone. Oh, the brother gone. Okay, let's keep it moving. That's it. The Most High going to bring in them brothers and sisters that want to do this work. And that's all I'm looking for. That is it. This ain't about, oh, hold my hand, I'm your friend. Go to hell. <laughs> you ain't about nothing, nothing but stopping this truth. Now, uh, Bezalel, in that same uh, thing, there's something called um, the catacombs. I want you to take a look. Give me that in um, Hosea chapter 314. Hosea 3 verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice. And without an image. And without what? An image. And without an image. Um, I want to go to the top, Bezalel. The actual uh, book. The cover of the book. I want everyone, we want everyone to pay attention. Okay? Focus on what we're showing you. Because this is not something that's going to happen in your everyday church or college or anywhere. In your universities. For those of you that go to college, you're not going to see this. Trust me when I say that. We've been in the colleges. We taught in the colleges. We brought these records to the students in the colleges, and they didn't even know that these books existed in their libraries. Yes. This is entitled The Unknown Catacomb. Okay, okay a unique discovery of early mm. Christian art. Go into it, bro. It was put together by Antonio Ferrua. Can we read Acts 11, 26, I thought? Come on with it. Now, remember we read about the children of Israel will abide many days without a king, a sacrifice, and without an image. The image of who the Israelites were and are was stripped from us. But the Most High has had these records preserved for us today. So that 
not only when we see this, because Esau will do the Jedi mind trick on you. What you're seeing is not really what it is. <laughs> These pictures were burned in the fire. That's why they look dark. Got, got all you got all that? Good, good. We're going to read all that. But even when you read the scriptures, so the, the Bible in conjunction with these books will let you know that the truth is here, that the Bible is the one true book upon the planet Earth. <coughs> you looking for that Yao Sa? Did you get Acts 11.26? <laughs> Acts 11.26. Acts 11, verse 26. Yeah, read it. Mm -hmm. Acts 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. The Christians were only the disciples of Christ. The disciples of Christ were only Israelites. They were not all races. Okay? So now, these book called the catacombs i just want to get the actual writing bezalel i had uh it's in there right here it says uh of over 50 known catacombs in rome the, the catacombs were underground burial grounds where the israelites we would bury our dead and we use those catacombs which was a labyrinth throughout cities mm -hmm. we would use them as meeting places because rome had put an edict out to A, put us all out, and then we had to die for keeping the commandments. Can you give me that in Acts where it said the Rome kicked us all out? Yep. Acts 18. Acts 18. I'm gonna show you the history behind this thing. This is what happened. Okay. Acts 18, verse one. Acts 18, verse one. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And found a certain Jew named Aquila. And found a certain Jew named Aquila. Born in Pontus. Uh -huh. Lately come from Italy. Lately come from Italy. That's in Rome. With his wife Priscilla. With his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius. Because Claudius Caesar. Claudius Caesar. Had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And came unto them. You see that? They made an edict and had all Jews depart from Rome. They kicked us out of Rome. So, there, there was a time where we had burial grounds called catacombs. I'm going to read it. Of over 50 known catacombs in Rome, most are denied to our curiosity in... Can we get to the side, Pastor Lim? Will it move over? So you can see, so you can read the rest of it. Okay, uh, denied to our curiosity in order to protect their wall paintings, which even human breath could damage irreparably. The five open to the public, the Agnes Catacombs, Callistus Catacombs, Domitilla Catacombs, Priscilla Catacombs, and Ad Catacombus in St. Sebastian are visited by more than a million people each year. I'm gonna jump down. Still implicit in such a visit are the risks that were run from the first to the fourth centuries AD by the sect called the Christians. Uh -oh. That's what we just read in Acts 11:26. Those were the disciples of Christ. Go ahead with it, bro. Against whom the Roman Senate had issued severe edicts and for whom more than one emperor had demonstrated his aversion. They were throwing us to the lions. Okay? That's what this talks about. So now, let's look at some of those pictures, right? See that black tunnel down there? You had to go down all of those stairs right there. This, this took years and years in the making. We shoveled all that out and used as hiding passages from Rome. Okay? Now pull back. Go to the next picture. This is on one of the walls. Look, pull that one. There. It says the sacrifice of Isaac. Okay? Look at Abraham. That's Abraham holding the sword. Can we pull pan in? Do y'all see what Abraham looks like right there? That's a black man. That is a black man holding a sword. All right? Ain't no doubt. Go to the next one. This is the forefather said. This is on the walls in the catacombs. Can we look? Do you see Samson's face? Do y'all see his face? This is Negroes here. Okay? Black men. See, the wall is white. 
You can see the difference between a wall and his skin. You can see the woolly hair. Now I'm stressing that because y'all stop's gonna show us something in some of the statements. <laughs> Let's see what else we got, does a little. That was it, all I said? All right, y'all stop, go ahead. All right, well, first of all, let me start off with Rome. Since we're talking about Rome, Let's talk about Rome. This is a book entitled Imperial Rome, right. of all places. Mm -hmm. By Time Life? Time Life Books, the largest book publishing company on the planet Earth. Let's see what the good book says. What I'm about to show you here, you heard the elder bring up about the catacombs, about those being areas where the Israelites used to flee from Roman, from when they were throwing us into the line, into the uh, arenas to fight the lions and the tigers and the bears, right? Y'all just saw that, right? Yes. But somebody might have in their mind that those were not so-called Negroes. Somebody might be thinking that way. See, you gotta, you gotta think deep. Cause somebody looked at those pictures and said, you know what, they look kind of black, but they're just quite, they're not quite black. Can you explain? Now, wait a minute, let's read the writing first. Because the pictures speak a thousand words, but Esau can do the Jedi mind trick and make them think that these look like Bill Clinton. Yeah. So you gotta get the words. You gotta let them see the words. So let's get the words. Um, Page. Right here. Here, read that. Right over here. All right, just... Right here. Oh, okay. The second paragraph I'm reading. The more unusual the contest, the better the Romans liked it. This is talking about in the arenas, when they had us, when they were throwing us to the lions and the tigers. But like that movie Gladiator, a lot of y'all watched that, didn't realize that that was you in the arenas. A lot of our people go watch these things like Spartacus and all that, that's talking about our people. Our people don't know any history at all, they're sitting up in college. Read. The more unusual the contest, the better the Romans liked it. Gladiators... Ho, 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 what? Gladiators... So, the gladiators, keep that word in your mind. What? Gladiators often fought with mismatched weapons. So the gladiators fought with mismatched weapons. That's the reason why a lot of us was running, because the fights were uneven. And we were hiding down there. When we were down there, we were painting pictures of ourselves all over the walls. Come on. Negroes... Wait a minute. What? Negroes, a rare sight in Rome, Go ahead. Were matched. I'm gonna deal with that rare sight in Rome in a minute. Were mm -hmm. matched with each other. So who were the gladiators? Talk to me. Negroes. Read it again. Negroes, a rare sight in Rome, were matched with each other. So who were matched with each other? Negroes. What are they? Gladiators. gladiators. So the next time you watch these pictures, know who the hell you're looking at. That's right. Okay. So now let's see what they what this cracker meant when he said a rare sight in Rome. We just read that a whole bunch of them was in Rome. So come look at out. these pictures. Come look at these pictures all over the wall mosaics. Somebody come. A get rare sight in Rome. What do you mean? A, what do you mean a rare sight in Rome? When they got all these pictures of us. Hold it up. Show it to pass it around. Let them get an eyeball of that. Let the women see that thing too. A rare. They said a rare sight in Rome. Does that look like a rare sight in Rome to you? With all those pictures. Look at the one down there at the bottom with the with with holding the other one. Look at his hair, he got, the, he got the black beard and the black hair, and his skin is dark. You'll see that, don't you? What's rare about that? See, he'll put that in there, he put that little slip in there to the Jedi mind trick. A rare sight of rare. Oh, it wasn't many of them. When all of those mosaics are showing you that they're all black, the musicians at the top, get the top of it. Where you got the people playing the instruments, like our people like to sing in the choir. Well, they had us doing that over there too. Damn. Get the musicians and all that at the top and all that. Look at the mismatch when it said they fought with mismatched weapons. You got the rel relics of showing you what they look like. See the musicians? See the musicians over here? You see the guy with the horn? See the people sitting down playing the music? Yeah. All those are black people. That's what they call a rare sight in Rome. King size lie. There ain't nothing rare about us. We were in Rome. We were the children of those that fled out of Jerusalem in 70 AD that was rounded up and brought into Rome and made slaves until we overthrew the Roman Empire 193 AD right. and ruled Rome all the way up to 1453 with the battle at Constantinople. That's, right. That's the history that you don't know. Okay? All right. All right, here's a, um, to prove further, we had a, a book that showed the catacombs that we built underground 
walkways and our very our day. We fled into Africa from Roman persecution, West Africa, we did the same thing there. It says, because of, this page 118 from Babylon of Timbuktu. I always read this book all the time. It says, because of Roman and Arab persecution. It says the Jews, it says uh, these Jews constructed subterranean synagogues and underground houses. Slopes, page 118 and 119. It says Slopes visited the strongholds of these troglodyte Jews, so they were forced to live in the underground, in the early part of the century. The Jews had built compartments three and four stories underground, containing a population of 30,000. He says they had shop stores, schools, and synagogues all underground. The achievements of these Jews prove what a persecuted society can do under adverse conditions. These Jews had a foundation to build on. Unlike other persecuted people, they had their history, culture, laws, language, and skills. They are all of a fine, dark type. That's the Jews living in West Africa. Okay, here's some more information. This is the same book. I'm going to page 48. I'm going to let the elder read this, and then I'm going to let y'all see the picture. Now, okay, this is page 48. Okay. And don't forget we want that, too. Okay, all right. We're going to get there. So, keeping in, keeping in the context, I like that word. We're taking it out of context, so we're going to stay within the context of what we're talking about. We just read about the gladiators were Negroes, right? Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Okay, let's read one other passage. Don't show the picture yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the top left, I just want to say this. There's a That's the amphitheater, Col Coliseum. The, right. Okay, now I'm going to read the caption at the bottom left. A triumphant lion brought to a pitch of madness by starvation prepares to devour a fallen gladiator. A fallen what? Falling gladiator. Class, who are the gladiators? Negroes. Negroes. Show them the picture. Out of time life books. I think they're ready for it now. Get alive. Give, give, give the camera Show me the theater, the, the, the Coliseum, top right. Look at the hair. Let me see the Coliseum. Get the Coliseum. That's the Coliseum. Underneath the Coliseums and throughout Rome, you had those catacombs. That's what we were talking about. Right. Are y'all with me? Yes. I know this is I know this is a lot to swallow because the only thing they taught you in school was Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. So I know it's a lot, this is a lot to handle. This is a big pill that you're trying to swallow. I understand that. Now Don't worry, you'll fallen, be okay in the morning. Now show the fallen gladiator. See the lion? Show it out, sir. Yeah. You see the lion on the top, right? They said that this lion was starved to the was 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 not fed to the to the brink of starvation. Right. Then they let him loose on the brother. Look at his hair on the, on the hair. statue. Y'all see the hair? You Zoom see? in close, sir. So they can see. So what did we read in the same book about who the gladiators were? Negroes. Negroes. So does that look like one? Yeah. Look at the hair. Yeah. Now you notice that the nose is missing. Right. And the lips is missing. Now, I'm going to talk about that too. That's a, that's a period in history that they call iconoclasm. Right. I'm going to read that out of this book here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that y'all can understand that. This is this the reason why you're forbidden to go to certain sections of the library system because right. your information is in there. Certain sections of the of the bookstores. And me and this brother used to tour the bookstores to Lower Manhattan years ago, and we always used to get questions yeah. about why we in these certain sections. But we knew what the hell we were looking for. <laughs> we knew what the hell we were looking for. Yeah, that's where a lot of these books come from. Right? And, and remember, we read earlier about certain catacombs is not open to the public. Right. It's not so much that the paintings are frail. Right. The real reason is because they have not touched them up yet. I'm gonna get all of that. Now, um, can we uh, show me that again? I'm gonna show y'all another picture in the catacombs in this book. Mm -hmm. This painting is one of the ones in the catacombs that um, I didn't print out. Oh, here you go. We get a lot. It says, now this is inside the catacombs. This says, a Romanized Christ is shown as the good shepherd in this painting, found in a Christian catacomb in Rome. Can we uh, show the, Help, there you go. the Romanized Christ? Romanized. This is in one of the catacombs. And y'all thought we were crazy. Y'all thought we were crazy. You know those pictures, are thousands of, almost thousands, thousands of years old. Exactly. And they show Jesus Christ in the catacombs black. You see that? Look at his tunic, it's white. 
But look at his skin. Look at the hair on his head. Right. Just like the book of Revelation says. Yep. Now, it's Romanized because, like I told you, when Esau released some of these things, they already went in and touched them. Nah, I'm going, I got that right You got there. all that? that book? Yeah. This is the day. <laughs> and, and these are the things you want and must show your children because you'll get dumb doctrines out there. Yeah. Don't show any black images of Jesus or none of the Israelites because it's idolatry. Shut up! <laughs> Wicked as hell! Just to hide the truth. Yes, Bezalel. If you look closely at the artwork, the edges are dark and the centers are light. So you can tell that's where they touched it up from the middle outward. Right. A lot of times they avoid the edges because they'll ruin the shape of it. So if you look closely, the edges are really dark. Exactly. And even when they do paintings over the, the heads, if you notice, they're always round as if they had hair. Right. But they, they, they do it like a head covering sometimes. Or, or a halo. Or a big right. head. Right, right. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, now. All right. Y'all had, had enough of this meal. Let me give you Can that. we get Acts 13 and 1? Yeah, that's right. Come on with it. Let's get Acts 13 and 1. Bring your in there. <laughs> Acts 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. Called what? Niger. Niger is the root of the word nigger. Mm -hmm. And it means black. Mm-hmm. So they was calling certain prophets and teachers, yo black, like today, yo black, yo what's up black? Yep. It was a slang term. So what we're showing you in conjunction with the Bible is reality. This is what society has spent billions to hide. And believe me when I tell y'all, society, the school system, the government spends trillions of dollars to keep this information hidden from our people. Yeah, absolutely. Because once our people realize that they're the great men of history, they're going to come out of that dumb, low mind state. They're going to stop hating each other. That's why you brothers got a big job to do. You don't realize it yet. Come on. Right. So, you know what? In a lot of these books that I have, I didn't bring it with me, but uh, a couple of the books that I have, because these were used. Understand that. Used. And when they were used, this particular bookstore that we used to go to, is a bookstore that allows you to bring your books to sell them to the bookstore because they would resell them. So a lot of the books would have notes written in there by previous owners. One particular book that I have had a, had um, had a, the name of the guy who who owned it. I believe his Adam his name was I'm sorry I believe his name was um, Raymond or something Raymond, and he had. He had the book and he had given it as a gift to a guy named Seth, S-E-T-H, Edomites, but they were taking them names. So he said, best wishes such and such. The point that I'm making is that these so-called white scholars, they have the records and they pass the records back and forth among themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm reading that this was a gift to another guy and it's all our history. Yeah. You understand? But you won't know nothing about it because they keep this information for themselves. It's important for them to do that because they have to know what not to allow you to get on to. So they have to study it. They have to study it. I remember I was talking about this uh, particular book that I also had, which was called... Um, um, that book that I bought about the, the Native Americans. What was it, the one that you ordered for me, Benjamin? What was the name of it, that paperback book? I can't remember. Most tribes, no, no, no. Um, the history? No, no. Something on Puerto Rico. Something history of Puerto Rico. That one. There was something like I can't remember the name of it. It slips my mind. The flame of resistance. The flame, the flame of resistance. That one. And they talk about, uh, there's a Puerto Rican tale, quote unquote, Puerto Rican tale that talks about a tyrant that wanted to put the nation, that wanted to put the island of Puerto Rico in captivity. But they said the first thing we need to do is to remove the truth from the people. So as they remove the truth from the people, they themselves will know what the truth is, but the point is to not allow the people to get hold to it, because if they ever find out the truth, we're in trouble. Right. So they don't get it wrong. They have to know the truth to know what not to teach you. Right. Exactly. You understand? So that's why these books exist. That's the reason why these books exist. They don't exist because they want you to get them. No, they exist so they can know what to read and stay abreast with so that they know what not to teach you. You understand? So now we're going to talk about a little bit of that. <laughs> All right, now, um, 
Now I'm going into another book. The name of this book is called. Hope I ain't skip anything. You want to read the icons? No, I'm going to get that later. I'm coming to that. All right. This is a book entitled Our Living Bible. Very expensive book. As you can see, it doesn't look cheap. Okay? All right. This is page 360. Mm, right there. I didn't even mark it yet. What, here? Thus. Oh, thus. You remember this? Yeah, I got, I got this book at home. Okay. It says, thus the Israelite priests were dressed in white linen. Thus the who? Israelite priests were dressed in white linen. Where does this picture, where is this picture from? Priests on a fresco from Dura Europa's 3rd century AD. 3rd century AD. That's and how old this picture is. Dura Europa's is in Upper Syria. Okay, now, show, show them what the priests look like. Are y'all ready? Now in case, in case y'all doubted the other pictures with the catacombs, well maybe they might be light-skinned black. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's, we're going to show you this one. You tell me if this is black or black. They got white linen on now, remember. <laughs> From the 3rd century AD. Thus were the what? Israelite priests dressed in white linen. What color are they? Come on, get the picture. Okay. Look, look at the clothes that they're wearing as compared to the feet and the head out of the out of the turban. That's what they have on their heads. Okay. Can y'all see that? Okay. Pass that around. Let them see that thing. This is in one of the oldest synagogues on the planet. Okay. I don't forget your thing that you right, sent me right. also. With and why do y'all think that our forefathers left so many pictures of themselves? Why do y'all think they did that? They had nothing better to do than leave paintings of themselves? Anybody got a clue? Joel? Our forefathers had an understanding of the enemies, the ways of the enemies. Like during the Greek captivity in um, Maccabees 348, the Greeks did the same thing that the Romans did. So it's a repeated pattern. pattern that they know in the future that they will have to leave um, pictorial um, evidence of who the Israelites were. Exactly. Our forefathers had that understanding. And that's why they, we, our forefathers painted so many pictures, so many paintings across Europe, across Asia. It was so much that Esau could not destroy all of it. <laughs> too many, too many. And that was for us, our benefit today, our sons and our daughters benefit today. Mm -hmm. All right. Only if we would teach it to our children. Right, and we're supposed to teach that thing to our children so that they can know that we're teaching them the truth. Okay? You have something else? Uh, well, I think it's in that book. Let's see that I'm, I'm, I'm saving yeah. your part for last. No, that's, those are images. Right. Okay. You couldn't take pictures, so we drew them. Exactly. You know, I'm worshiping them either. Do y'all do understand what y'all looking at? This is... This is precious information. You're not going to find this in a comic book or nothing. This is nowhere near the level of a comic book. Scholars, very few scholars have this in their repertoire. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now. And that's why these books, they're starting to up the prices on right. these things. Or out of print. Or make them out of print, right. Or like Yawasa pointed out, when he first took me in the store to buy them, he used to say, Asa, buy it now because when you come back, it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. One time, he waited outside and I just went to the ATM, ATM and the book was gone. Because when these people hear you asking for books, he used, to, he used to brief me. He said, when you walk in the store, just go, it's over there. Don't ask them nothing. As soon as you start asking them questions, they want to know why this Negro want this book. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. We're going to get some more. <laughs> now this class is going to get some of, them, some of our <laughs> brothers and sisters angry who hate Images of our people. Spaniards. Them Spaniards. Just That's be clear. You other Israelite cats that are good for nothing. Let's just be clear. Let's just put it out there. Let's not sugarcoat it. You Israelite cats that are good for nothing. That don't want to depict your people in the true state that they are. <laughs> and we're going to look at some of this truth right now. This is a this is an icon, a photograph of a painting. No. That is, this is the like brothers already saw, so they're going crazy already. These are the two archangels. Damn. 
I think one is Michael and the other one is Gabriel. Oh man. Show them that. Dang. <laughs> you can't argue that. <laughs> the name of this book is The Icon. Let me hold up the cover. Oh, the name of this book God. is called The Icon. We want to show them this picture. Damn. Damn. Here. The Archangels. Oh, yeah. All close to the camera. Just stay with you. The Archangels. I, I, don't know, I, I know why he's trembling, because he's, he's holding some precious stuff there. Right, right there. there. So okay. you that. Get a white man out of that. Yeah. That's wow. Michael and Gabriel. Damn. Get mad now! So if the children that went to that pool knew about this, they wouldn't be all set up and all yeah. messed up in their mind. And a black woman wouldn't be crying because the white man wouldn't, wouldn't marry them. They out of their mind. This is what they don't have. <laughs> Look at them pictures. Thank Look you at the think, afros you on. You think a so-called Negro know anything about this? No. Because it's his preacher won't show it to him because the preacher don't know and the schools will not teach him. They didn't get to that picture. They, right. that they didn't whitewash that one yet. They didn't get to that yet. They, missed they didn't out. get to that yet. I'm going to read about that. I'm going to read about that whitewashing. Damn. I ain't done yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. Nope. Now you can't get nothing. You can't get nothing out, nothing else out of that but what you're seeing. Right. In case the catacombs was too light for some of y'all. That's crystal clear how black those girls are. It's kind of light. They might be Puerto Rican. That's but too much. For them. <laughs> right now they have them. <laughs> okay. All right. Come on back. Come back. There's a lot in this book, but let me get to some of the writing now, so you can understand what has happened. When we talk about when I mentioned earlier, I mentioned about um, when the Israelites were brought, when the Israelites fled out of Jerusalem. In 70 AD, and were rounded up and brought into Rome. Well, actually, the ones that fled out fled into Africa. But then there was a group that came into Jerusalem and took Israel into captivity, took them into Rome. Right. And they were made slaves. And that's what we were showing you about the gladiators and all of that. Okay. So, uh, so in 193 AD, a man named Severus Septimius, black man, right. rose up with the gladiators that was in the army. Because Rome liked them. Rome liked the way the gladiators fought, so he ended up putting a lot of them in his armies. Hmm? That's the movie Gladiators based on. Gladi Russell Crowe is, is um, posing as Septimius Severus. It's a story revolving around that story. Basically. Okay. Y'all got that? Yes. So what ended up happening was that they overthrew the whole Roman Empire yeah. and ruled Rome all the way up to 1453 with the Battle at Constantinople. Then in 1492, they ushered in the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. So now, I'm going to read some information about what occurred during those times. Because the Renaissance was about the rebuilding of white folks' ruling. So can, we, can we read Maccabees? There you go. You, you, you know I was waiting for that. <coughs> Let's get that on in it. Because on. we're going to get Maccabees in conjunction with what D.K. is going to bring up out of this book. I know some of y'all think we're full of hot air. But well, we got the artifacts. How many of y'all like what y'all seeing today? Raise your hand and say aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> Chris Maccabees 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Mm. Where the what? Where, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. There's God giving you the backup to what we're about to read right now. Read that again, please. And laid open the book of the law. And laid open the book of the law, which is the Bible. Because our Bibles used to have images of like what we're reading here. Mm -hmm. This was not new to our people. Right. Our people... You see them doing this on the walls. What make you think that we didn't put our pictures in our book? That's right. Come on. And laid open the book of the law. Laid open the Bible. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Wherein the heathen, the nations, the white man, sought to paint the likeness of their images in our book. Yep. That's where these picture Bibles come from with these white men in it talking about their Jesus and Moses and these Jehovah Witness comic books and all that garbage showing the, showing the Israelites as white people. A bunch of lies. Okay, read it again. And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So they put their images throughout all, through all, all throughout our Bible. Now let's read about the time period that they started doing this. This is a book, well, this is in the book, the same book called 
Iconoclasm. Page 11. Page 11. So what I want to say here, when somebody was asking about the author of the book, these different authors dedicated different parts of it, because I see Kurt Weitzman was the person that dealt with this part of the book. Chapter so they, 1. Chapter 1. So the top of the page says Iconoclasm. Mm. What does the word Iconoclasm mean? Read that. Read it for me. Come on with it. Right from here? Yeah. Uh, this is chapter one. The icons of Constantinople. This was organized by Kurt Weitzman. Mm -hmm. It says iconoclasm. Venetian looting in 1204 and the sack by the Turks in 1453 are the main reasons why only very few icons have survived in Constantinople. So in 1453, that was the that was the time period that Rome where, that when they overthrew us in Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay, read it again. Iconoclasm, Venetian looting in 1204, and a sack by the Turks in 1453 are the main reasons why only very few icons have survived in Constantinople. Why well, very few icons have survived in where? Constantinople. Good, that's in Rome. Come on. It may seem daring, therefore, to write an entire chapter on the icons of the capital. Yet the situation is not quite so hopeless as might appear at first glance. So what is this guy selling you? He said, listen, they had a campaign to Icono... Before I even go any further, look up Iconoclasm. Somebody look it up. Let's look up what that word means. Y'all can almost tell what the name means just by breaking down the word itself. It says uh, uh, Iconoclasm is short for Iconoclasm. All right, y'all Icon listen good. Listen. Iconoclasm means a breaker or destroyer of images. Did y'all hear that? I don't think they heard that. A breaker or destroyer of images. A breaker or destroyer of what? Images. Of images, meaning icons. The word icon is talking about images of famous people. There's pictures of famous people, come on. Especially those set up for religious ver ver ven veneration. Come on. A person who attacks cherished beliefs, traditional institutions, etc. Okay, as being so based on error or superstition. Now they're going into the other parts of the quote-unquote religious parts. But give me the first line of it. A breaker or destroyer of images. A breaker or destroyer of images. Do you realize when they destroyed the image of Christ and gave you the white, so-called white Jesus, that was an act of iconoclasm? How many of y'all realize that? <laughs> By teaching your children that Christ is a white man was an act of iconoclasm, which translates into an act of war against you and your children. Wow. Racism. Racism in its purest form. Because the Bible tells you what Christ looked like. These people are going to say, no, we're not accepting that because we're racist. And we want to put up somebody and we're going to lay open the book of the law and we're going to paint our images in there. I'm going to quote the scriptures. Right. Now, Read. All right, I'm going to read on. It says, icons existed not only as panel paintings. No, ho, ho, ho. Y'all with me now? Settle down. Settle down. It may seem, read that part again. Okay, it may seem daring, therefore, to write an entire chapter on the icons of the capital. Mm -hmm. Yet the situation this is. This part right here. Yet the situation is not quite so hopeless as might appear at first glance. So what is he saying there? He said that the situation doesn't seem so hopeless because he's already introduced the fact that iconoclasm has already happened. But he said, but the situation is not so hopeless. So what is he saying? We found some that were not totally destroyed. Right. Because his sister, he said, I found some. That's why it's not so hopeless. Let's see what he says. Icons existed not only as panel paintings, but also as frescoes and wall mosaics. Some of which have emerged from layers of whitewash. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Some of what? Some of which have emerged. Some of these famous pictures have emerged from layers of whitewash. From what? Layers of whitewash. From layers of the white paintbrush. From layers of the breaking and destroying of our images. Some escaped. That's what he's saying. We've discovered some. They didn't put this in a book for you. Right. They put this in the book. For well, their people. How many so-called Negroes you know have this in their collection? <laughs> I'm talking about so-called scholars. Don't have any kind of book nowhere near. A so-called black scholar will have no idea what we're talking about. 
Come on, read it again. To highlight it. Icons existed not only as panel paintings, but also as frescoes and wall mosaics. Some of which have emerged from layers of whitewash. Stop right there. From layers of whitewash. This is a painting of St. George. I want to show you how the layers of whitewash, they uncovered some, it took away the white layer of paint. Look at St. George. You got the, the right one? Yeah. You see the outer layer and the layer under it. Coming? You see the, the tone in his face? Around the mouth is dark. Certain parts of the fingertip dark. Because over it was a white image. And under it was the real image. That's what the author was explaining. You see it? You see it? It was a black man under it, but on top they had a Caucasian. That's what they did with all the black art throughout Europe. Wow. That means, that means the white paint weren't, wasn't as good and then it set in. Exactly. As the black paint. Exactly so right. His right but his lips, his nose. Yeah. Look at his fingers. Yeah. Don't move. Yeah. Okay? The blackness, they couldn't cover it. How many white people you see with an afro like that? <laughs> okay? You got the Al Sharpton, Sharpton Perma. <laughs> now look, look at the drawings around the paint, the paint, the big painting. Those are the paintings of the uh, disciples. Look at them. Those are black images. All right, I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to show you now, there were stages in their whitewashing. Because, do y'all remember the first picture that I showed, that showed, yeah, you got to hold on to that. That's <laughs> part of the awesome. Don't, don't kill him yet. Um, we showed what the Israelites looked like that were dressed in white linen. You remember how dark they were, right? That, that picture was untouched. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you what these people do. Get a lot, come up here. Now this right here is, <coughs> this right here is one step of their whitewashing. Now y'all might say, what's going on here? Why is he showing this? Come back up here for a second. I need both of y'all to hold these books side by side. I want y'all to notice that you're looking at the same picture. One was daubed one time with whitewashing. The second one, they redid it again. They completely get rid of the color. Hold, hold, hold your book open. Pull it back, let the class see it first. I want to point out, step back and say, we're going to get it for the camera. I want everybody in the class to see this first. What y'all looking at in this book here is one layer of whitewashing. You see it still has a lot of color in the, in the picture, right? Over here is when they completely destroyed it. It's the exact same picture. Somebody take a look at it closer and you look at the different details and you'll see that it's the exact same picture. But they went further and destroyed it with this one here. That's what we were reading in this book about iconoclasm. Y'all with me? Yes. Okay, now show it to them on the video. So you see the different stages they took in the whitewash. And this was um, Endure Europa's also. Right. This is they're, both from, they're both from the same place. Right, Ezekiel. That's the valley of the dry bones. Right, and they different that's stages make this, right. of that's the whitewash. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> That's the Ezekiel and the Valley of the Dry Bones. That's what you're looking at there. Out of the same book, it shows a, a painting of the prophet Moses. That's Moses. The prophet. No, that's Moses. No, that's Moses. Oh, that's, that's Moses. Oh, yeah. He's got the burning bush and right. the Ten Commandments in his arm, and man them some bad garments that they wear. Yeah. <laughs> the, the prophet Moses. And the other picture is the prophet David with the crown on his head. Mm -hmm. And this right here is the, uh, the apostle Andrew down here at the bottom. So now, show these pictures. Show him, look at Moses. Show Moses first. Point to Moses. Now, when you look at these pictures, think about Charleston Heston playing Moses in the Ten Commandments. That's Moses. Holy. That's Moses with the burning bush. Look, get, get that head. Get, get the garment. Damn. Look, look at the majesty of how we rolled. Looking like bums. What the hell is this? We ain't supposed to be no bum people. Look at them bad garments, man. Damn, we were some bad people. And he's holding the Ten Commandments in his uh, left hand. Now that's what you call royalty mm -hmm. on a painting. That's Moses. Now that's go, Moses. Go to David now, right next, next to him. David. 
the other, other way. way. The other way. Right there is King oh, David. Oh man. Oh. Holding the Bible in his hand. You can see they tried to touch up with them crush, well, right? Yeah, 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 but they didn't finish it. That's King David holding Damn. a Bible in his hand. Look, Look how down. big it is. Get the rest of the garment. The Come on down. Head. So, Look at that. Got green and gold. We got green and gold. Got green and gold. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, you see diamonds and all. This is the way our people would. Let me tell you something. When the so-called Spaniards showed up on the island of Puerto Rico and all that, this is what they found. Yeah. Our people were dressed like this. That's why they went stone cold crazy, robbing and killing. Because they saw this is how we were rolling. Y'all yeah. don't understand that. They tell you you were a bunch of bums waiting for the white man to come civilize us, to civilize you. You crazy as hell. You don't know how great you are. Could, could you show the fringes on the bottom of his garment? Yeah, please. Go back please to show those fringes. Look how long they were. And they're all around the garment, not in the all four corners. All around the garment. For you Jewish Negroes out there. Okay, look how thick they are. This is some beautiful stuff here, brothers. And sisters. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, man, yeah, man, Esau has messed up with that. Esau, man, they give you a job to do. You messed up. Hey, they tried to lighten it. Look at his hands. But they was like, this Negro's too black. We can't, we can't pull this off. They said, darkness. Darkness. They said, they couldn't do it. Darkness. They tried it in his neck, his beard. Look, the neck. And look, it, it was not working. He's <laughs> not it alone. But the, I want y'all to realize this, because we're looking at this, and you actually get to, get to Back. face it. You get to confront the realization that our people are our people have been have been lied to by our enemies. Yep. Our people have this is you seeing it you seeing it live and direct. Can we yeah. read the scripture? Yes, absolutely. Deuteronomy 33, 17. That's right. Come on with it. Give me some scriptures on this thing before I lose my mind. <laughs> All right, get a line. Come on back with it. Let me get it back. <laughs> oh, you show Andrew at the bottom. Get Andrew. That's Peter's brother. Right. That's Peter's brother. Check that out. Oh, they, they tried start, to touch they, they him started too. working on him too. To you see those, right. the brush strokes. But what, the, but what did the beginning of the book say? Some of which have emerged from layers, layers of, of white wash. He's holding in a pistol in his hand, a letter. Wow. Mm. Deuteronomy 33 verse. Is it 17 or what, is, what verse? Is it? No, I want the one about your enemies all the way down in the 25. Oh, 29? Yeah. 32 and 29. Yeah, 33 and 29. Deuteronomy 33 verse 29. All right, Andrew, look, I mean, uh, get him, Andrew. Andrew. Get him. <laughs> Come on. Deuteronomy 33 verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars. Our enemies what? Shall be found liars. This is what we're showing y'all today. Our enemies are found liars. So all these classes we're going through, brothers and sisters, take note and take heed and be diligent. Okay? Here we go. Can we see Peter and Paul? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to get to them. I'm going to get to them. Acts 21, verse 37. Paul is the one with the receding hairline. Peter is the one they tried to touch up. If you, Peter had an afro. Look at Peter. Yeah. Do you see the brush strokes where they try to make his hair straight? Yeah. But look at the skin. Both of them is black men. Read again. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian? So Paul was mistaken as an Egyptian. Look at him. Dark skin of the tribe of Benjamin. And you right? Peter, you know? That was it, right? Yeah, and Peter was called Niger in Acts 13, verse 1. Right. Right. Read that earlier. Exactly. Thank you, get a lot. The, um, the, the image of Peter's what? I, I wanted to point out that notice when you when you see these old images, um, when they whitewash them, you see how his, his, his hair makes up the most part of his head on yeah. the left? Yep. They'll take that and make that the whole head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To cover up the, the fact that they had woolly texture hair that it was shaped in the, in the form of afros. You see what I'm saying? So you see, like, they started whitewashing this one, but they didn't get to the other one yet on the right. Yep, exactly, exactly, exactly. Thank you, Get Alive. Now, this scripture, right, this picture that
that we're going to show here is uh, the Bible and the Gospels. Uh, it's about the man that was being healed of the palsy by Christ in the house. Y'all remember that? Yeah. It's in the book of Matthew. I got the scripture written here. Matthew 9, 2 to 7. Okay? But our four parents painted what Christ looked like with the man in the bed, picking up the bed and walking away after he was healed. Right. Can we read that? Matthew 9 and, and 6, verse 6. But that ye may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. Then said Peter the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. So where we at? We just read about Christ and the palsy, right? Right. Now, let's show the pictures. Get alive. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these pictures that you see where it's Dura Europus, I, yep. be I believe that these pictures are in the synagogue that was adjoined to this house where his brother, where his brother, uh, had, had the synagogue attached to his house when you read the book of uh, Philemon. Right. You see uh, Jesus Christ right there. See him pointing? You get a liar. Use your finger and so where he's pointing to the man in the bed. They're right. That's Christ where he got his finger on his head. See the face is dark and he's pointing to the man in the bed. Then to the side, you see the next scene, the man carrying the bed on his back. That's what we just read in Matthew chapter 9 verse 6. Read it again. So they read it again. Read it again. Get the whole thing. Matthew no. 9 verse 6. But that you may know that the Son of Man have power on earth. To is that the beginning of it? No, verse 1 is the Verse 1 is the beginning. We're getting to the point. Oh, okay. Alright, go ahead. Verse 6. But that you may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. Then say a Peter the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Now, wait a minute. I want to make a point of this. This is Christ speaking, right? And Christ is making the point that this is what? This is, he has the power to do what? Have power on earth to forgive sins. To forgive sins. To forgive sins. That's what the palsy was a result of. Do you all understand that? That's showing you that the commandments of God is in effect. That's Christ himself speaking. Do you all understand that? Yes. Read it again. But that ye may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sin. To forgive sin. Come on. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy. Then saith he unto the man who was in sin. And the result of sin was the palsy. So this was the act of forgiveness. Come on. Arise. Arise. Take, yes. Go ahead. Take up thy bed and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. So that meant that his sins were forgiven. Right. Y'all understand that? Yes. And but you see the man uh, carrying his bed right yeah. there on the left. And look at Christ. That's one of the earliest paintings on the wall in the synagogue of Christ. Pointing to the man and forgiving him of his sins. Y'all see that? That is not a Caucasian man. Not at all. You don't see no string of hair on him. See what Gedaliah's finger is? Look at, look at, look at him. See? Okay. All right, Tom, you got the other painting? Yeah. All right. Yep. Now, show this one. This is a painting of the Nativity of Christ. Page 172. Page 172 in the book, The Icon. No. No, the other one. The other one. Yep. It shows you the three wise men uh, going to a... Uh, Christ as a baby. There's Joseph thinking. It says why he thought on these things. See Joseph at the bottom thinking. He's a black man. When you go up, see the child in the manger above it, and you see the three. They got three. It's got the three magi, magi right there. Okay, above that you got the angel. Now to the right you got the angel going to. Uh, that's Mary. Look how black they are. And Mary's in the center right there. That. Mary's in the center. Then you got above it, you got the angel speaking with Mary again. So these are images of our ancestors as black men and women. And it's not idolatry, because we ain't praying to the painting. <laughs> simple. People simple as hell. Okay, y'all see that? Yes, sir. So it behoove y'all to get these books, find these books and get them. All right.
Uh, yeah, man, show me, uh, show that uh, Joseph figure. You see what in the bottom? Bottom left. Show Joseph again. Right there. Esau cannot put a wife in the misery. <laughs> Look at that thing. Try to argue that one. You know? So I want to ask a question to the class. Y'all seeing all of the stuff that we're showing you up here. The question that should come to your mind is why would this white man go so far as to, to destroy this art? What do you think the purpose of him doing it? Because he didn't have anything else better to do? Yeah. Talk to me. Why do you think he would painstakingly go through all these efforts to destroy this information? To destroy what the people look like? I want some of these young brothers' hands. I know you older brothers, but I want somebody who's new to the class. I see them brothers with you. 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 Stand up. They want us to be cut off from being a nation. <clears throat> That's they true. Don't want us, they don't want to remember us anymore. Right. And it says that scripture. Right. That that is correct. But what this all what this this shows what 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 has just been displayed to you is an illustrated uh way of showing you how they did it. You understand? It's a lot, man. I mean, and it's, it's just amazing the magnitude people because they hate. Right. The magnitude, That's the magnitude of hate they have towards our people. That's what you see. You actually see the levels that they've gone to to make sure that you stay stupid. That's the point. Mm -hmm. So that we can remain uh, consumers. So we could that we could remain the economic wheels to keep their society growing. We stay in sin become coons and negroes and they just live live it up at our at the, at the dispense of our ignorance you understand that's the reason why these are hidden from you that's why people have never heard of books like ancient jewish art and the book called the icon and our living bible written by these prestigious scholars and all that that's tucked away in these leading universities some of the books that some of the brothers got come from harvard and yale with these same images in it Yep. And you got Negroes that's going to these schools don't have a damn clue that, that these books are in their campus libraries. <laughs> Liam. Yeah, in the college that me and Officer Young go to, we found the book Lost Trapped in Promised Lands, and I was the first one to take it out. It was dusty, and it was out the first one. So that proves that our people don't read. You, you see know? that? Now, how, how long ago was that? This had this had to be about March, April, around that before the Passover. I said, so that was this year. Yeah. That has been out for at least 20 years. Yep. I had the book, me and him had the book 20 years ago. And this book has been sitting in that campus library untouched until you checked it out this year. You see that? That's a shame. That's a shame. And these are college kids. These are college students. And a lot of the people that's in the colleges are the, are the subject of what these books are talking about. Exactly. Can I show you a paint? This is a painting in the, our living Bible from the tomb of Noct, 15th century BC. It shows Joseph and the Israelites in Goshen. Mm. Can you show them that? And get a white man out of that. That's inside one of the tombs. <laughs> There's Joseph sitting, this is when he was sat on the throne of uh, Egypt. Let's get it right. There's Joseph right there. Right holding a scepter, and you got the Israelites in Goshen. Okay, that's in one of the tombs. Painted on one of the tombs. Where is the Caucasian? There's the forefather Joseph, the father of Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay, in Israel and Goshen on the walls. Black. And you can't. They they like to say that there was a fire that burned them. That's why their skin is like that. But look at his clothes, it's white. The wall was uh, uh, plastered white. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop falling for the okie doke. That old Jedi mind trick. Okay. Yeah, okay, we ain't nothing. I walk around my pants below my butt. Okay. <laughs> Kidding me? Go ahead and talk about our fights. Yo, I tell you. Yeah. Oh, we read, um, Go to first Maccabees and read 3 and 48 again. First Maccabees 3 verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the heathens, which we know is the Greeks, right? 
The scripture said they, they paint their likeness and their images in the Bible. Why you all think they did that? What's the effect of them painting their images and their likenesses in the Bible? What was the effect? Ezekiel. I'm sorry. What was the effect? The effect is... At, you know, when they do things like that, over the course of time, we would never think we were the ancient people of the Bible. And we would never think we were the Jews. We would always think that it was that it was them. Exactly, and what that also do it destroy the mind of our people, because with all these pictures we bringing out today, you see Christ, you see Moses, you see Peter. All right, all the, all our forefathers was men of color, and they all had white woolly hair. All right. When they do that, put their image up, they, 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 they put that low surface, our people grow with that low surface steam, thinking that they nothing, yeah. all right? That's why you got a lot of brothers and sisters today, they put on contacts, green contacts, right. yeah. there you go. Go they the straighten their hair, they bleach their skin and all of that, trying to look like Esau, right. because they don't understand the greatness of how our forefathers really look when they they still got that state of mind that 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 um that Esau is great. That's why they try to look like Esau. All right, but we bringing out all these pictures of how our forefathers look. This is to uplift our people for for all of you all to understand. Listen, eh? this is how our forefathers look. They was men of color. All right, they had the woolly hair and all of that. This stuff is to uplift us. Right. All right, for us to feel good and try to look like them. That's right. And don't try to look like the white man. All right? <laughs> Here's another one from Dura Europus. It shows Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. Mm. <laughs> look at that. Dang. Dang. That's on the wall. Look at Moses. He's the taller one. Both of them. Now, I want y'all to get the understanding of what you see. Look, because this, believe it or not, they tried to whitewash this. Yeah, look at his legs. But look at the feet. <laughs> they forgot the feet. They forgot the face. The, face, the feet is lighter than the face. But look at the, look at the oh, on the behind left. Them. On the left, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to confuse the on the boots. No. <laughs> <laughs> this matter is so cold. But look at Moses. Look at look at Moses standing there. <laughs> right there, Moses. I think both of them is Moses. Both, 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 Moses. both of them is Moses. Right. Black. Two men. different scenes. Two different scenes. The scene on the left is where the Egyptians were coming. Right. The one on the right is when they parted the he, Moses right. parted the Red Sea. And you can see them drowning all right, right. the other one. That's what the rod that he held over the Red Sea. Right, and it just was drowned right drowned there. The look at all the brown dead bodies in the water. Do they look the same color as Moses? Yeah. yeah. Talk to me. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. So what do we know about the Egyptians? That they come out of Ham. So that means the Egyptians, Ham, and the Ethiopians got the same complexion. So that means Israelites look like them. You understand? That's the reason why they had to once again lie, like when they made the movie, the Ten Commandments. They had the Egyptian king played as a white man, but then they had the Ethiopian king played by Woody Stroll. They couldn't lie about him because too many people know that the Ethiopians are dark people. They know that. They know they're black. They turn on the TV, see them starving and all that. They know that those are black people. You understand? So they couldn't lie about white flies, so they know they, they can't lie about them. So they said, but we're gonna lie about the e we gonna lie about the Egyptians. Give me, yeah, I'm gonna read this. Give me uh, the Bible dictionary about Ham, real quick. Because I just made a point that the Ethiopians and the Egypt and the Egyptians look alike. So they shouldn't have lied. But the reason why they lie is why? Because they want to continue to destroy us. And while he's doing that, where you at? Oh, okay, I'm showing the picture. <laughs> you gotta read all this. Oh yeah. This is from the book. Now, this is heavy now. This is super heavy. Jewish sub picture history of Jewish civilization. No more. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember what I said that I had a book that had this writing from this guy named Raymond the Seth? Right. Here it is. It's right here. It's in this book. 
1987, April 25th. This is when the book was given to him. Dear Seth, read it. Yeah, show it on the thing. Dear yeah. Seth, best wishes to you on this special day. So Raymond Montana. Showing that Esau was given this book as a gift to another, to another Edomite. So what we're telling you is not lies. At the very top, it is dated April 25th, 1987. So when you go to those used bookstores, yes. they have these books that they pass uh, one to another. It's not meant to get in our hands. Y'all understand that? So the name of that book is what? Picture History of Jewish Civilization. So who's in this book? Jews. And it was so-called Jews passing it to another so-called Jew. Yep. That's why I think you got the name Seth. Yep. Seth. Now let's look inside the book. Yeah, bring the book back. <laughs> Get page 12. <laughs> Pictures of Jews. Pictures? I gotta read it. That's right. Give it to him. Hang on now. It says, the thousands of war captives who were transformed into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their feats of engineering. Chained captives are shown on these painted clay facing plaques from a building erected by Ramses II. Ramses II, who was in captivity under Ramses II? Israel. So that's who the war captives are. Read them one more time again, please. The thousands of war captives who the were trans thousands of Israelites who were transformed into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their feats of engineering. Chained captives are shown on these painted clay facing plaques from a building erected by Ramses II. In honor of the king's brave warriors from the period of the 19th dynasty. So you've got these, these plaques that you are about to see actually came, listen good, came off of the walls of a building that was put up by Ramses. So this is not comic books that you're looking at. So those are the those are the Israelites chained up. Look at them. Yokes of iron. Yokes on of their iron neck. on their neck. And those yokes are similar to the ones America use, like we see in many of the artifacts over here. Look at the garment as compared to the face. Don't tell me that they didn't have color to paint if it was a white person. Right. Look at these, the are, these are the, the things nose. you gotta look at. Look at the is, is that not a black person? Yes. yes. Take them out the nose. Yep. Okay, get the other one. The one on the other side. Right. With that's the feather a feather in the head. Right. See the feather in the head? Yeah, yeah. black woman. That's yeah. a woman. Yeah. With a yoke of iron on her neck. Where where these where where did this come from? A building that was put up by Ramses II. You talking about thousands of years old yeah. that we're looking at. This is not a comic book. Okay? These are the books that these crackers pass back and forwards among each other while they ride the tour bus and laugh at you. Yeah. You shake their head at them. You shake their head. At us. So you see, this is a beautiful thing that we're bringing out. Okay, this is something that you should remember through all the days of your life on how great the Lord is because he allowed, he allowed this information to reach our fingers, to teach it to our people. This is a great thing. If it had not been for the Lord, we'd have been lost forever. None of this information would have came out. We wouldn't even know nothing about the Bible. We would still be Negroes and Coons. That's because that's what we were meant to be in this society according to them. But God said, no, I got a different plan. Even though you destroyed them because I allowed you to do it because they broke my laws, I'm going to bring them out of that ignorance and I'm going to give them the whole planet Earth and I'm going to give you to them. That's what the Most High is going to do. He's going to make them the property of us. He's going to make them our property, which is their rightful place, slavery. Exactly. Now, I'm, I got to show you this thing. How Esau, a lot of them know that they are Esau. Where's that at, y'all? So you ain't got yeah, I know yeah, it. You know it. Okay. Uh, I didn't know I had to get that. Okay. Remember we showed you earlier how one Edomite named Seth gave this book to another Edomite named Raymond. Raymond, Raymond gave it to Seth. He was from Now they read the book. Now I want y'all I'm gonna read. I want you to show this on film. <laughs> I'm are y'all read ready? On bottom of page 94. Right. I'm gonna read the bottom. Set it up again. Set it up one more time in case there was an audio glitch. <laughs> These are the books that the white folks was passing back and forwards among themselves. And the elder made the point that these people read the book. So they've read what we are about to read and they kept this information to themselves, which is okay, according to them, because they know who they are. But the problem is, is that we got hold to it. Mm -hmm. Now. Go ahead. Now I'm going to read it. 
It says, he sends a prophet of his choice over them who will conquer the land of Israel for them, and they will come and restore it to the Jews. And there will be a great hatred between them and the children of Esau, Rome. So next to Esau, they have Rome in parentheses in this book. Can we show that? So these, some of these Edomites know exactly who Are y'all all right? Are y'all okay? Point to it, Gedaliah, so they know. The children of Esau. The children of Esau, Rome. See, at the bottom line, hatred between them. Back it up so they can get the whole And the children of Esau, Rome. So, hold it right there. That one Edomite knew what's the sense of the other Edomite. Hold it right there. Right there, that's it. There, we, there will be a great hatred between them, meaning the children of Israel, and the children of Esau. In case you don't know who Esau is, Rome. Exactly. That's, that's what he's telling you. That, that's for you so-called, that's for you Deuteronomy 23, 7 lovers. Right. Don't know poor Edomite. That Christian spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are racist sitting up there. Do we write these books? No. Nope. Oh. Did we put these books together? Did we put a gun to somebody's head to make them write this? No. Wait, look at above it. It just it says in the middle, Lord of the universe. Mm -hmm. Is it not enough for your sons, for your sons what to eat? What the evil kingdom of Edom wrong? Evil kingdom of Edom wrong. Get Maccabees <laughs> and evil. I'm showing you that our enemies know who they are. Yep. We're the ones that have been stupefied in these yep. so-called Christian churches. Verse Maccabees 1, verse... Read verse 1 first, so you know one. who we're reading about. Mm -hmm. And it happened after that, Alexander... Alexander, hold it. Listen good. Alexander, I want everybody to listen. Alexander was what? The king of the Greeks, correct? Yes. When you read in your Bibles, when you go to Daniel chapter 7, you read about the order of the empires. You read about the Babylonians. Then you read about the Persians and the Medes. Then you read about the Greeks. Then the Romans. That's the order of the empires that they have in Daniel 7. When you look in your Bibles, they end with the book of Malachi. Mm -hmm. Who was ruling during the time of Malachi? So when you turn the page and you're in the New Testament, who's ruling? Where is the where is the history and the information on the Greek Empire, which Daniel recorded in the Apocrypha? Right. Thank you. Let's read verse Maccabees one verse one. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. So that was the kingdom that he took down, the Persians, okay? That he reigned in his stead. That he ruled the earth, come on. The first over Greece. The first over what? Greece. So we're gonna read about this Greek empire. We ain't done with that, Gadolai. Just one more second. Get to the main, get to the meat. Verse 11. Verse 11 of the same chapter. Sorry, verse nine. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. And what? And evils. And evils were multiplied in the earth. And evils were multiplied in the earth. They can't teach the people. That's why they had it removed out of the regular Bibles. Yeah. Because they can't say the civilization began with the Greeks when God calls them the devil. Straight up. He's saying that you. He said that the evil started with you. He said you're the evil people. And spread. That's what God is saying. I know a lot of people are having a hard time with that. Malachi. Let's see about more evil. Malachi 1. Yeah. Malachi 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom said. Whereas. Hold it. Whereas what? Edom say it. You look at the screen and the, what what did we read up here? It says Lord where's that part? Lord of the universe mm -hmm. is it not enough for your sons what the evil kingdom of Edom Rome did to them. Edom Rome the evil kingdom of Edom Rome and evils were multiplied in the earth. 
And, they, and you get these dumb Israelites that say, no, Rome was not Edom. But the archaeology, the history here bears it out. The Bible tells you now you got archaeology writings to show you what it is. That's common knowledge. You can go online and see that. <laughs> Read on. Malachi 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. That's when they came back and built America. Come on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. That's why the most I said in the book of Revelation, he said this kingdom is going to go into perdition. He's going to destroy it with fire. He's going to kill it. Read. And they shall call them. And everybody going to know that this man's the devil. They all going to lift up a shout against him and say, Woe unto him that increases that which is not his. They're going to know he's the devil. Read. They shall call them the border of wicked. You are the people where wickedness begins. You are the you are the you are the inception of evil. Martyr. Okay. <laughs> Read it again. And they shall call them. And the people shall call the Edomites. The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness and. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. You hear that? Because God made them to be the devil. That's what he made them that way. Okay. So there's nothing you could do about it. I know a lot of people are upset. Twisted about it. Mm -hmm. Had plans to marry him. <laughs> you you should have learned enough from that doctor. Right. Here's another book oh, called Classical Biblical Baby Name. This is how Rhodes Scholars work. They'll do a book. It might seem like nonsense. Right. But in the book, there'll be one or two sentences that have significant meaning behind it. And they only let their people know where it is and what to look for. You think, of, again, as simple and silly as this book looks, how many so-called Negroes will even have this? Right. Classical, classical Bible biblical names. names. Biblical names. No, he ain't going near that. He want to name his his he want to name his son the devil. Or Rahim. Rahim. He want to name him Bam Bam and all kinds of Shakuma and all these wild. Shanae. Shanae. Bilal. 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 A brother named his son Bilal. Can you believe this? Oh. The author is Judith. Tropia. Edomite woman. Edomite woman. I spell that Tropia. Tropia is T-R-O-P-E-A. Now on page 72, one of the boy names she has Esau. Mm. Now, I'm going to read the last sentence. And you get it on the screen. It says, of interest, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. Can we show that? What does the word forefather mean? What does forefather mean? The generating root. Right. The genesis. Edom is the genesis of Rome. Right there. That's good. Of interest, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. You see that? She didn't write that for Negroes. She wants our people to be arguing, no, 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 it's not. That's for their people mm -hmm. to understand that their history. Y'all better get these books, I'm telling y'all.